This is Alan. Now, anybody who knows me knows I'm crazy about this little cat. But as well as bringing us a lot of joy, he's also brought us a lot of worry. He's had a cataract, he's got a heart murmur, and he's even dislocated his knee. So I know how frightening it is when a pet gets poorly. Come on, you. Hang on in there, please. Hey. Hey. Emma's dog, George, has collapsed outside their home in Deaton near Huddersfield. The St Bernard recently had a serious operation to repair a twisted gut. Emma's worried the procedure has been too much for George and she's desperate to keep him going as she waits for the animal ambulance. He's my best friend. He's absolutely fabulous. He just gets ill quite a lot. Uh, about three weeks ago, his stomach swelled up. Um, while he was out in the garden and we had to rush him to the vets that day and he had a, a gastroplexy, an emergency operation and he survived and this is three weeks later and he seems to be struggling again so we need to get him back to the vets ASAP. Pet paramedic Dave arrives. He knows it's life or death. Hello. Hello, my darling. George. Okay. Ooh, St. Bernard. Yes. Now, I know he's had a gastroplexy, darling. Yep. Was that as a result of a GDV? Uh, Blow up. Yeah. Gastric torsion. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Stomach okay, swell. and has he been all right since he had that? Yes. Okay, Puppet. Have you got him here on your own, or did he get this far and then he fall got over? He's on his own. Um, I tried to get him in the car, but he collapsed. Okay. Uh, if he if he gets up, he starts pouncing. When he's right. down, he's fine. Okie dokies. Right. I'm going to open the back of the ambulance. Just make a bit of room for him. I'll have to take the divider yeah, out yeah, for a chap yeah. his size, and then we'll move him. Okay. okay. Two ticks for me. Uh, it's not going to be easy with a dog that weight. He's going to be about 70-ish kilos. It's going to take some lifting. Hopefully, he'll manage to stand up for me. Okay. Good boy. George is put on a stretcher so he can be carried to the van. Without the animal ambulance, Emma and George would have been stranded. He's been given a chance, but he's still seriously ill. All right. All right, honeybee. Straight to the back. The Yorkshire Animal Ambulance transports more than a thousand pets a year. A quarter of them are emergencies like George. The team are on standby day and night every day of the year. I'm on my way with pet paramedic Dave to see an old friend, a six-year-old Springer Spaniel called Louie. Hello, Louie. Hey, Bobby. Hello, Louie. Louie has yeah. an appetite for things he shouldn't eat. After a recent binge, he had a fit and collapsed. We'll see you there. OK. Owner Jackie can't drive and called on the Yorkshire Animal Ambulance the night that Louie became ill. She needs their help again today to get to a follow-up appointment. And pop it. Come on, this way. Well, we've got him here without him being wobbly. The last time Louis was here, he had his stomach opened. The vet removed string, twigs, the squeaker from a toy, and many other bits that shouldn't have been there. Okay, so we're going to take his stitches out today. Okay, might have fun. The stitches are plucked out of a delicate area, but with Dave keeping Louis calm, the job is quick and seems painless. Are you ready? So tell me, what makes a white van into an animal ambulance? Apart from the sign writing on the front to indicate that it's an emergency vehicle, we've got all sorts of equipment inside. We've got a full trauma kit, oxygen, a pulse oximeter to monitor patients and all sorts of restraining equipment. Suzanne Waller set up the Yorkshire Animal Ambulance in 2006 after her own dog became ill and she was unable to get it to the vet. Most of the time the ambulance does actually run and just about cover its costs. Um, really everything that everybody does, that Dave and Jim that, uh, that do the job, um, get enough to cover their wages and everything else is pretty much a labour of love really, more than anything. Linda and Rick called for the animal ambulance when their young dog, Eli, got impaled on a broken fence. The splinter cut into his chest near his heart and lungs. He'd lost a lot of blood. Um, I mean, I, I, I was covered head to foot, really. Um, it was just everywhere. Everything was going through my mind. It, it's in, obviously, I needed to get him safe, need to get him stable. Suzanne took the call and was quickly by Eli's side. 
Um, she arrived like with a big bag um, and stretcher, and then she just sort of took over from there. Really, um, I removed my hand f from his wound, at which point I sort of seen the size of it, and straight away she just put a dressing on it. Suzanne got Eli out of immediate danger. The animal ambulance charged a small amount for the call-out, but large vet's fees and risky operations were to follow. We had money that we'd been saving up for a wedding. We had saved about £6,000, um, and we just decided that we'd use it for Eli. There wasn't any doubt or we never thought, oh, my God, we're going to lose our wedding or anything like that. It was just a case of... We've got it. We've got it. We need, it needs it, so, you know, we'll worry about... What about everything at a later stage? So you were told that it was 50-50. How were you feeling at that point? It was just awful, just sitting, waiting to see what was going to happen and whether he was going to come round or late. Yeah. And but then I, I think we both cried bucket loads, to be yeah. honest with you. George the St Bernard didn't recover. Emma was with him when he died. Uh, the pet ambulance people came and uh, did everything they could for him, but unfortunately George just uh, decided he'd had enough and, and that was that. It was quite a sad ending, but I think if it hadn't been for the pet ambulance, I'd, I don't know what I'd have done if it hadn't been for Dave. Out. Dave is out walking one of his three dogs. Shake. It's not just the owners who are affected when a pet can't be saved. While we've got no emotional attachment to your particular dog, we love animals. And we have to learn to deal with it. Um, luckily, the thought that we might be helping animals and the times that we get to go to the vets and bring a happy animal back with a happy owner, they outweigh those bad times. Back in Halifax, and it's six months since Rick and Linda's dog impaled himself on a broken fence whilst out walking. And Eli is back with a bounce. So tell me what it's like to have him better and, and oh, well. It's just amazing seeing him running about on the moor and just playing like he should be doing. It's just fantastic. He just looks great. You can't even tell that he's had a major operation or he had such a big scar. And it's just brilliant seeing him jumping about like a nutter as he is doing. If it wasn't for them and um, how quickly they responded and how quickly they got him to various vets, um, I don't think he would have survived, to be honest. It was, it was a really bad injury. Um, they saved his life, basically. If it wasn't for them, he probably would have just died. So we owe everything to them, really. <laughs> Whether it's saving a pet's life or giving advice when the worst has happened, the Yorkshire Animal Ambulance helps owners in their time of greatest need. For Suzanne and Dave, it's a labour of love with the occasional heartbreak. <laughs>